What's going on guys, Andy here, G4 Outdoors, and this video is coming in from Coleo Noir. If you guys don't know Coleo Noir, check out Coleo Noir's videos. I'll leave a link in the description. He does amazing content. Um, this video is about a 13 year old who took a gun from his hesitant mother when there was a home intruder all jacked up on meth. Let's check out the video. Well, here's a little story about two friends that came together And we started up a YouTube just to talk about whatever We're on a boat catching big bass and smashing them cats From review videos to just making you laugh Cause we got guns, we got knives, we got fishing, we got hunting We got everything you like, so hit that subscribe button We're in the outdoors, doing things that we love We're talking guitars, girls, green grass, and guns all right, this video came up on my subscriptions feed. I wanted to react to it. 13-year-old shoots home intruder after taking gun from hesitant mother in Phoenix, Arizona. This is by Coleon Noir. Um, let's check it out. A 13-year-old boy fends off a burglary suspect shooting the intruder as he tried to break into his home. The protector of the home, the hero in this case, is a 13-year-old. His name is Luis, and he's in eighth grade. He was home late Friday night with his mother. See, usually the news doesn't cover stories like this. They like the negative stuff. I'm surprised uh, this is actually being covered, but let's continue and four sisters when a man tried to break into their house, breaking a window, trying to force his way inside the home. Now, Luis and his mother both confronted this intruder. It was the mother that was armed, and she was also trying to dial 911 and call police. And when Luis saw his mother kind of struggling with the firearm, he is the one that took it from her hands and pulled the trigger, shooting that intruder in the abdomen and on in the arm. Phoenix police say they found 35-year-old Juan Saavedra with several gunshot wounds to his abdomen and right arm. Police say he admitted to breaking in. It takes a lot to step up in a situation like that. There's a lot of people that don't want to take a life uh, or even be involved in that situation. I know I, I hope that's something I never have to go through in my life. Even though I own a lot of guns, I don't ever want to have to shoot anybody. But uh, props to this kid for stepping up and uh, doing what he believed was right. Into the house and that he was high on methamphetamine at the time. He also told police he was trying to find the friend he had been doing drugs with earlier when he broke into the house. Saavedra was banging on a door, then shattered a window despite being warned to leave the property. Juan Saavedra, September 11, 1987. Saavedra was treated and released from the hospital for his gunshot wounds. At his first court appearance, his drugs, only concern man. appeared to be getting out of jail. I'm not going to be released. If you post your bond, you'll be released. Good luck, sir. You know what the craziest thing is? The anti-gun lobby will probably use Let's this case on as one of those child gun violence incidents whenever they use those stats to try to scare everybody and make people think that a bunch of infants and children are just getting shot to death every other day when that's not the case. You see, and what's also interesting about it is not too long ago, Gavin Newsom in California was crying and clutching his pearls about how gun manufacturers are marketing guns to children and basically try to come up with a law that pretty much prevented any gun manufacturer from being able to market any firearm in California. But here we are with a 13 year old who was able to do with an, what an adult can't do. Now, that's not an indictment on this kid's mother, not at all. There are some people who have a hard time taking a life regardless of the circumstance. And then there are other people I said who earlier. will rise to the occasion. That's not always the case and you shouldn't depend on it. But here you have a 13 year old who was able to protect his family with a firearm. That's right, a kid was able, or a teenager was able to protect his family with a firearm. Let the anti-gun lobby tell it, the only thing a firearm can be used for is evil. All firearms are bad, especially in the hands of a kid. But yet this kid just saved his entire family. There will be no congratulations to this kid. The anti-gun lobby isn't gonna prop him up and say, you know what, we feel this way about firearms, but. That's kind of what I was saying about the news, usually not covering stories like this because uh, they are anti-gun. They don't, they don't want anything positive gun related. I never think shooting someone's a positive thing, but protecting your family, standing up for what's right, 
The news usually just doesn't want to hear it. This kid did the right thing. It'll be hush. They won't say a word. But that also speaks to how firearms are the great equalizer. Here you have some lunatic hopped up on crystal meth and he was able to be put down or at least stopped by a 13 year old. And it's also a perfect example of how a firearm is neither good, it's neither bad. It just is, it's a tool. That tool gave that 13 year old the power to protect and save his family. Let's say this kid didn't know anything about firearms. Let's say the firearm wasn't in the house to begin with. They would be behind the curve. So, take this video and show people so that they have the examples because the media is not gonna show this video. You'll get it on some local news and it'll be gone in a day or two and nobody will ever hear about it. But now we are in a position with social media to broadcast these types of videos to millions of people so that they can see how firearms are used for good. And one other aspect too that I'm pretty sure people caught on, this guy's probably gonna get out on bail. That means he'll probably get high and do the same thing over and over again. So I want you to think about that. It's a rotating system. He was already out on probation and now he's gotten shot in an attempt to burglarize a home and now he's in jail, but probably gonna get out of jail to get out on the streets and do it all over again. That's the kind of system that you have in this country right now. So the system is a vicious cycle and it's true. A lot of these people that do these crimes like this get out and just do it again. Over and over and over and over and over. Guns aren't evil. People with evil intentions do evil things with guns. People with positive intentions do positive things with guns. Like he's saying, it's just a tool. The gun doesn't kill anybody. It's the person behind the gun. But the media, no matter what, is always going to try to turn it into a negative light. So, you tell me, can you really truly depend on the government to keep you safe when the very people who are trying to harm you are just being let right back out into the streets like it's nothing? And say what you want. I'll be the first to admit, there is a component to it that is inherently just the system. The justice system is inherently designed to avoid having innocent people thrown in jail without any due process. So that much part, that part I get. But understand, the realities of that means that there are some very, very, very bad people who are going to be continuously let back out onto the streets as a result of it. So that to me is the greatest incentive not to put your hands in the trust of the government and to figure out a way to defend yourself effectively with a firearm because of the way the system is set up and that's just inherent it airs on the side of protecting the innocent while and i'm i'm for the police like i always will be for the police but there's a time discrepancy between calling 911 and having someone get there when someone's already trying to break through your window you have to wait however long whether it's minutes for the police to even arrive you got to be able to protect yourself and your family especially from crazy people like this oh you know what just accepting the fact that there are going to be some guilty who will be let back out onto the streets so you need to do what you need to do to protect yourself no one's going to do it for you there's no system in place that is foolproof that's going to be designed there to be there exactly when you need it. It can't happen. It won't happen. The only person who's going to be there immediately when you need it is you. Yeah, it's a dangerous world we live in nowadays. And uh, having the options and the tools at your disposal to protect yourself and your family is something I believe everyone should have and have the right to do if they want to. Like he was saying in the video, the, the police aren't going to be there. The government's not going to be there to protect you at that exact moment. You have to be there to protect yourself, whether that's <clears throat> physical in a combat situation or with a tool like a firearm. So with that all being said, guys, thanks for watching this video. Check out Coleon Noir if you have not. I'm sure a lot of people that watch this video check out Coleon Noir already, but if you haven't, please check out his content. He does a lot of cool stuff, gun reviews. Uh, and videos just like this so make sure you check him out and until next time guys if there's any videos you want me to react to leave them down in the comments below i will try to get to any video that i feel goes with my channel and something that i want to react to so leave it down in the comment below and i will see you guys in the next one i'm out later Monday. Monday.
Tuesday, Tuesday Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. I just dream of fishing while I'm going through my workday. I listen to my boss, though he's driving me berserk. Eh? Damn it, I can't take much more because my brain is really hurting. And now the bank is always calling and I don't know what to do. And I haven't bought a crankbait since like 1992. But the bass are out.